Hi, I'm Jim Nairn. I'm a professor in the Department of Psychological Sciences, and I'm here to give you a brief introduction to the research requirement. Now, you might wonder why we make you participate in research as part of introductory psychology. Well, there are really two reasons. First, it's important for you to appreciate that psychology is a science. It's not just what you see on Dr. Phil or Oprah. It's an empirical science. By that, I mean we use, the, we use observation as our Supreme Court of Appeal. So we want to give you the opportunity to see exactly how we do that. And second, the research requirement enables you to see how actual experiments are conducted. And the experiments that we do here in the Department of Psychological Sciences are representative of, what, of the way research is conducted around the world. And this research that's going on here at Purdue is often cutting edge, leading to the generation of new knowledge that can be used in very practical situations. Let me give you a couple of examples. For example, one kind of experiment that you might participate in is a reaction time experiment. This might seem boring to you at first glance, so you'll be asked to sit in front of a computer and various pictures or symbols will appear on the computer screen, and you'll be asked to press a button signifying whether that particular symbol is on the left or the right of the screen, for example, as quickly as you can. Now, why would we do something like this? Well, actually, it turns out that your reaction time to the way stimulus configurations appear on a screen can tell us a great deal about how to design, say, cockpits in F-16s or 747s. So industrial engineers use the data that we collect in psychological laboratories of the type that you'll see here at Purdue to help design equipment that people can actually use. A second example would be that you might come in and be placed in front of a computer and be asked to make ratings about pictures of people, like how attractive are they or how much do you like them. Or even random words might appear on a screen and you'll be asked simple questions. Now, why would we want to do something like that? Well, it turns out that oftentimes your ratings, even when you're not thinking about it, or your reaction times, even when you're not thinking about it, can provide a great deal of insight into not only cognitive processes, but also into how people interact socially. So we've learned a lot from simple experiments like that about how prejudice develops and discrimination and so forth. So I want you to use your mind when you're participating in these experiments. Treat them seriously because they're serious research projects. But also think about what you're seeing while you're participating. Ask questions when they're over. At the completion of the experiment, you'll be given a sheet of paper that will explain to you exactly what this research is about. This is your opportunity to ask the researcher questions about well, what does this stuff mean? Why am I doing these things? What can we learn for society from this research? But most important, participating in this kind of research will show you how the material in the book comes to life. You'll be able to see by looking at these research experiments exactly how the research that's talked about in your textbook came to fruition. So have fun and enjoy your research experience here at Purdue.